Today we're taking a look at Rahab. Rahab is identified as Rahab the prostitute in the book of Joshua. Kind of an auspicious way of being announced. Not really the part of a title that you might ideally want to have. You know, last week we talked about Tamar and how Tamar took on the role of prostitute in her interactions with Judah. Well, here we have an actual prostitute and she will interact eventually with the tribe of Judah, but we'll get there in a minute. So, Rahab lives in Jericho. The people of Israel have just crossed the Jordan. God has once again parted waters to allow his people to walk across what is otherwise a flooded river. And they walk across on dry land. The spies come to Jericho, sent by Joshua, in order to get the lay of the land, to find out what the people are up against as they attempt their first military conquest on that side of the Jordan. The king of Jericho discovers that the spies are in the city, and he sends word to Rahab to find out what's happening and what she knows. Has she seen them? Because word has gotten to him that she knows something. She admits the spies have been there, They've already left. In fact, before the city gates were closed, she says, the spies have already gone. If you hurry, you can get them. Well, the truth is, the spies were hidden on her roof, even as she's telling the king's men this story. See, she's wanting to cut a deal. She and her family, and in fact, the people of Jericho have already heard about what's coming. They've heard about the Israelites. They've heard about this tribe of people that have come up out of Egypt, that have spent this time traveling in the wilderness and are now entering into their area. They've heard about the crossing of the Jordan. They know God is with them. So what does Rahab do? Well, Rahab wants to cut a deal. She knows that God is giving over the city of Jericho to his people. So she asks, if I help you to escape, will you promise to look out for my family? Will you promise that my family will be kept safe when you conquer Jericho? The spies make this promise. They say, you let us out, you hang a red cord, which is the rope, which is what they actually are going to use to escape out her window because her house is in the wall of the city. You hang that outside and anyone in your family that is within your home when we attack will be safe. Now, no deal for anybody who's not within your home. We can't be liable for anybody beyond that. But if they're in the home, we promise. We will hold true to this promise. We will protect your family. And so she lets the people escape. The spies return to Joshua. They report back, the people in Jericho are afraid of us. The time is right. The land is ready for us. God is with us. And in fact, her enemies in Jericho, they know it. You know the story of Jericho. They march around the city once on the first day. The same, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Day seven, they march around the city seven times. Finally, blowing trumpets and yelling loudly in order for the whole world in that area to hear. And God causes the walls of Jericho to crumble. But Rahab and her family are kept safe in her home. Now, how does she connect with the genealogy of Jesus? Well, she ends up marrying a man from the tribe of Judah named Salmon. And she and Salmon have a son named Boaz. Interestingly enough, we will hear about Boaz next week. Take time. Take a look at the reflection sheet. Give some thought to how God made use of a woman who might not have been looked at as the kind of person that you'd expect to see in the genealogy of Jesus, and yet here she is. What does that tell us? Blessings in your reflection, and have a great week.